You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 176 of Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my award-winning friend, Jeff Gargan. What award? Well, let me clarify. Did you make something up? (laughs) No, you are not award winning, really. But I wanted to tie it into this amazing award winning book that came out last week, which Mm. is very much award winning. So you got like an introduction based on something I want to talk about, essentially. So I'm like award winning adjacent or something weird like that because I know him. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Great. Awesome. Um, so obviously that means we're going to talk about Hans and his awesome new book. How did you know that? Why um, would you? Primarily because we discussed it beforehand. So we're going to talk about him. But then you also did the award thing. So guys, he just had this book come out. It came out <laughs> on Friday, May 22nd. Hans Apple just published award winning culture with Edu Gladiators and Jeff Gargis, do you want to tell us a little about the book? Because I won't lie, it's been a huge deal for the past week and a half. We've been nonstop talking about it. And I want to make sure our podcast listeners heard all the details. Well, so it's called Award Winning Culture, Building School Wide Intentionality and Action Through Character Excellence and Community. So like where the book really breaks down, this is Hans is like what he'll he'll just take you to if you have a conversation with him too and it really breaks into the book is these pillars of character, excellence, and community. And that's the whole award-winning culture, uh, the three pillars of that. And uh, the big thing that I love about about Hans and, and Jennifer when they both do this, but in Hans and his book and Hans and his real-life work and everything he does is that word intentionality and the word intentional um, is everything he does is very intentional. And when they talk about award-winning culture, a big piece of that is this just everything you're doing has a meaning, has intention, has has an intentional purpose to it. And that's how you build true school-wide and therefore district-wide uh, culture. And he goes into like extreme detail in this book. He breaks it down for you. I mean, it's basically a playbook for how to create literally award-winning culture. I mean, the, the, this that name comes from the fact that they've literally won dozens of awards up just for their culture and what they've built in their school and he's taken it and he put it on this book for you to take back. And you can implement that at a classroom level, at a building level, um, and then at a district level as well. So uh, I'm pumped up. It's getting great reviews already. Um, it's phenomenal. Hans is just an awesome guy. Uh, I'm super excited for him. We love the Edu Gladiator team too. So it's just like a win-win-win all over the place. So go get it. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes & Noble. Buy it. Give it a rating review when you're done reading it because it's awesome. Make sure you follow Hans. He's at Hans N Apple, A P P E L, um, and give him a shout out. So um, and that's all. I, mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it other than continue to say how awesome it is. That's kind of where I go all the time. So well, I think what I love is I love books that aren't just books. They're you know really ways to transform your practice, and it really is all encompassing. So. While you should go get this book, and while there's so many amazing things about this book, it's more than a book. Go to awardwinningculture.com. There's blogs. There's a book study, a free book study, by the way. There's so many things. And then Jen and Hans are the real deal. They eat, sleep, and breathe award-winning culture. So I really love that this is so much more than a great read that you go put on your shelf afterwards after you know telling your friend about it. But it really is a mindset, and I'm thrilled that people are going to get more exposure to ways that we can support our students and create the positive culture they need to thrive. So shout out to Han, so proud of you, friend. We're so excited for you and honored to kind of celebrate your book with you during this time. And, and speaking of Hans and Jen together, they have an awesome new podcast, Award Winning Culture, uh, yes. which is featured over at teachbetter.com slash podcasts in the Teach Better Podcast Network. So uh, they helped us kick that off. It's awesome. It's, it's literally like taking a walk with Hans and Jen. And just literally. chatting about education, I mean, like it's that's Maya. literally what they're doing. Well, and Maya, yes, and their dog, of course. What am I thinking? Yes, it's like going for walks for them and just chatting, which is just like, I mean, it's awesome. It really is. So make sure you subscribe there as well. 
And they're quick little episodes, guys. So I have really enjoyed binging them because they're like quick 10, 12 minutes, um, little tidbits of information. They come out once a week, but they release 10 all at once. There's actually like 11 or 12 episodes out right now. So tons of content start and like and binge it and still take a little bit to catch up and stuff. So it's really, yeah, it's really cool. So. Um, it's not, it's none of this long nonsense like we do here at Teach Better Talk. So <laughs> get we short and sweet. <laughs> we're still let's here. We're still, let's, yeah, let's get to Bree. So, so Brianne Fennell is a first, second grade Lupin teacher, which she's going to explain to us exactly what that means, which is really cool. Um, and she's also an author, the author of Play Yay, um, with Edu Match, our good friends over there. And honestly is also just an awesome person. Brianne's so much fun. She's been in our family forever um involved with things that we do chatting on in in on social media dropping in with us all the time in our dropping she's on every she's been a part of every one of those dropping in the comments literally she was on me, with me on one of them but every other one she's there saying good morning right away and um she's just a lot of fun she's she's writing for us over at teachbetter.com as well she's super passionate about playing in the classroom and bringing play back and you have something to add i can tell by the way you're throwing your finger at me I do. I just want to throw in, <laughs> she submitted a proposal for Teach Better Conference 2020, and I really, really, really hope that she's able to make it because those so proposals good. actually close this week. They close like at the end of May, and she was telling us all about her proposal and her cute little title. I'm so stoked for her. She's doing great work all over the place. Which, by the way, teachbetterconference.com, you've got, what, two days now, I think, from yeah, today to days. go get that in, so do that really quick um yeah so let's just leave it at that let's get into episode 176 with brianne fennel hey guys we'll get right back to the episode but really quick i want to highlight the webinar series that the teach better team is offering over at teachbetter.com slash webinar series and did i mention y'all it's free so you can join myself chad Urshowski, Mandy Freilich, Kevin Butler, and Jennifer and Hans Apple as we dive into educator mental health, remote learning essentials, the grid method, engagement, and so many other elements that can support you to be better at a distance. And you can go register right now at teachfire.com slash webinar series. All right, I've told you enough information. Let's get back to this awesome episode. All right, we are here. We are chatting with Brianna Fennell and Bree. It is so awesome to have you on the podcast. We're already laughing. We're already goofing. It took us a while to get started because you're just like part of the family. So we just kind of like forgot that we were recording a podcast and we're just laughing and joking around and stuff. So this is going to be fun. We're going to have some fun here. I'm excited about it. Excited to learn a little bit more about you, dive into your head a little bit. Before we get too far going, how are you feeling right now? Um, excited to be here, definitely. I'm a little tired because of all the um you know just distance learning has has been um an adjustment but uh we are near the end we have two weeks left and i delivered gifts to my kids today in the rain and so maybe a little bit feeling like drowned rat look (laughs) (laughs) it's pretty rainy in ohio today so it is you hear that ray She's in Ohio. Whatever. I am. Two Whatever. against one. Bri- do we have to do O-H? <laughs> no. O-H-I-O. <laughs> you can't do I-O-L. I and I. Oh. No, yeah, it's too hard okay. to spell. All right, moving on. <laughs> Bri, I don't care if you're in Ohio. You are still so fun. I was so excited when I saw you on my calendar for somebody who's coming on the Teach Bear Talk podcast. I actually... No kidding. Asked you before we start recording. I'm like, how have you not been on the podcast before? So <laughs> I'm thrilled to like introduce you officially to the Teach Better Talk family because you've been in the Teach Better family for so long. I cannot believe it took us this long to get you on the podcast. Before we get into all of the questions we have and our surprise little giveaway we'll be doing, will you kind of share with our audience like who you are, what you do in education, kind of answering that question of what do you do? Yes, I am in Ohio, like Jeff said, and I teach first and second grade looping. So each year I go back and forth. Um, I stay with the same group of students for two years. Um, I am an author of a book called Play Yay, and I have two little boys. So I am a teacher mom for sure. 
Uh, and so that's that's me. I am a defender of play. That's what I like to say. Um, and big, big fan of all things books. Mm. Ray, Ray, do you guys do Lupin in your district at all? Is that something that occurs in your district? We we don't, but I knew that Bree had done this because I feel like I've heard you talk about this before because I so, really so that, believe in looping. I was trying to figure out whether I was the only one on the podcast right now who does who didn't know that until not too long ago. Uh, so, Bree, can you, for, for anyone that maybe is like me and what may not super familiar with how that works, can you kind of just explain real quick like how – how Lupin works, what that what that looks like in your and is that is that something that happens in all the grade levels or just certain specific ones in your your district or what? Well, it just it kind of started when I I used to teach in private school and then when I moved to this public school the first year I was there they asked me about looping. They're like, "Would is this something you'd be interested in?" And I was like, "Yes," because I'm so much about relationships and so looping. There are different. Um, components, but I I typically like a full loop, which means you loop with all of your kids to the next grade level. Now, you know, obviously there's move outs, move ins, those kinds of things, but it's kind of just like family feel. And so I always joke and I say hashtag fen fam. And so I've been trying to get that to catch on with my kids. <laughs> and, and just recently I got a, a note from a little girl that said, I was so glad to be part of hashtag fen fam. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know it was so sweet. Um, but the there are lot there's lots of research behind it why it's good for relationships. It's it's good for um, students who have trauma and need that consistency for two years. Um, I work with intervention specialists and and sometimes I'll have the same intervention specialist for two years with me, but sometimes I won't. I also have a gifted cluster. And so um, that's what my master's degrees in is of uh, gifted education. And so, um, you know, I just, we just do this journey together. And so um, it's starting to kind of catch on uh, in our elementary schools where, um, you know, I kind of needed somebody, when I did it the first couple of times, it was like somebody retired. So it was like a place to move into. But then I kind of needed, you know, I needed a partner, somebody who would do it with me. And so um, I now have a looping partner. So we do first and second. And then um, some other really cool, brave teachers decided um, to do a K-1 loop. So now we have this kindergarten, first grade loop with two teachers. And then we have this first and second grade loop. And so really the benefits for kids are kind of endless. It, it's all what you make it. So if you have um, that good rapport and relationships with kids, like right now, I'm at the end of a loop of two years with kids. And it's like, it, this was the best possible time to have a loop because I know my family so well, and we all have that relationship. It's like, they they feel really comfortable, you know, coming to me and asking questions and they, they know my style and they know, you know, I'm going to be there for them. And so I'm just, I am like just delivering things, you know, whatever I can do to help my families. But it's so hard, I think at the end of that loop to let go. And that's my hardest thing is like, I keep asking my principal, can I just go to third grade with them too? <laughs> And she's like, no, we need you back, you know, in first grade, so you can do this all over again. So that's what I was going to ask. If that, if that, I'm sure there's people listening, going, oh, that'd be so great, but it would make it harder after year two because now I've got two years of just falling more and more in love with the kids. But, but again, you get that 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 two year loop. I think that's pretty awesome. So that's cool. Um, let's just go ahead and keep staying off the the typical. We'll, we'll stray off the path again here. Let's talk about <laughs> your book. Uh, so your book is Play A. Came out okay. with our good friends over at EduMatch, which is awesome. Um, tell us about the book, sort of what's it all about, who's it for, and then I'd love to hear sort of what what, what brought you to it. Like, how did you get there? How did you connect with EduMatch? How did that all come about? Yeah, so um, Play Yay was actually based on my son when he was little, and I've actually kind of been diving into this play-based research, and like, how does play, you know, impact the brain of a kid? How does it impact even adults? Like, do we forget to play? It's kind of like that Peter Pan thing. Like, we still find things that bring us joy and we still find things that 
you know, help us connect. And if you're parents, then you kind of get to re-experience that again. But if you're not, you also have like running, exercising, like the same things that release those uh, serotonin levels in your brain. So um, Play A is a book for kids and it is, um, you know, it's a children's book. There's lots of color uh, and it really just takes you on a journey with a kid who gets a box and all the things that his imagination can do with this box. And, um, you know, I am a big believer in, you know, play in the classroom. And that's something, you know, within my loop that that we do like the the STEM building, the hands-on, like whatever you can do. And that's something that's that's been a little bit hard for distance learning because it's like, what can I put in a plastic bag and deliver to my kids that can give them that same impact, uh, you know, as, you know, an activity that we're doing in school, so. Love it. So let's let's talk. Uh, you know, we always talk about failure on this podcast. So I'm wondering if you can share a story about a time in your life that you've had a failure or a challenge, something you had to overcome. Can I take us there with you? What happened? How did you overcome it? And then what did you take away from that experience? Absolutely. Um, I will kind of go off. I didn't finish your last question, so I'll kind of tie those together. Um, when I got connected with EduMatch. So I, you know, I have been an author for a long time. Um, my first book was actually published in, back in 2012. And so after that, you know, writing and submitting and being a part of the writing community isn't something that's easy. Um, you know, I've been connected with a lot of really amazing authors and people and um, through a Twitter chat, Book Camp PD, um, I, with Meredith, like I um, got connected with uh, Rochelle and Rochelle... Uh, had written lots of lots of books that we had studied on Book Camp PD. So I kind of went uh, and kind of was like, okay, who who are some of the the people that are publishing the books of these these amazing authors? And so I got connected with Sarah. I actually pitched an idea about a math curriculum that I'd written through my master's degree. And so, like when I connected with Sarah, I'd actually been talking with another like an actual math, like a math company that was specific to that. But I knew when I talked to Sarah that it was like, it was meant to be like, it, she just made me feel so relaxed in this world where I'd had a lot of rejection, you know, uh, for, from different, you know, book submissions and that kind of stuff. It's like, she was like, oh, I love, you know, I love your passion. I love your story. And so we were just like an amazing fit together. So. Um, that's kind of how I got connected with Sarah. And so what's funny, you know, I did, I did connect with her and I was like, you know, I, I'd really love to get this children's book out. And so we actually went a different direction. You know, we didn't release that math curriculum right away, but we released this book play yay. And um, I have another book coming out after this, that is actually play yay baby talk. And so it's like both of my sons are in this book she just makes me feel, I call her my book boss. And so I was like, hey, book boss, you know, what do you think about this idea? So so the next book that will be coming out will be Play A Baby Talk. And then eventually my math curriculum will be will be released into the world. But I love that she's allowing um, me to kind of take the path that that I'm super passionate about in this moment. You know, it's so interesting. You know, I was just talking to someone earlier today that had a book idea and pitched it to a publisher and got turned down multiple times. And I, I really enjoy, Bree, that you're able to share not only a time that you had this idea and put it into words and knew that you wanted to share that story, but also went through the hurdles of trying to get something published and kind of like knowing who to contact, building relationships, and now look at you you know, multiple books and, you know, another one coming out soon. It's, it's, it's so exciting to hear those stories. So I'm so proud of that work and I, I'm so excited to see the next one. Thank you so much. So in terms of what you currently are doing in education, I mean, between being an educator, being an author and all the other things that you continue to do, what has you really excited about education right now? You know, obviously play must be a huge part of that, I would assume, right? Yes, it is a huge part of it. I think 
Uh, something that I try to do is carve out that time for play. And it's not always easy, but it's like, hey, you know, grab the kids and play a game of Uno. Or um, we just did, uh, we got canvases and we did some painting and um, the trampoline and, and kind of preparing our backyard for outside play. Like those types of things, they kind of keep me motivated and and going. Um, like I said, I'm super passionate about books and just connecting with people uh, through Twitter is my main place um, about their books and what they're writing. I just got to read and be a part of a focus group for one of the Edumatch authors. And that just got me really excited. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many things I could do with this book in my classroom. I can't wait until it comes out and I get a copy. I can put it on my shelf. And uh, like, it's just, it's just real. It's like, um, just something that I say, if it's, it's so it makes you so passionate, it starts coming out of your eyes. That's how I kind of feel about education. So something like COVID isn't gonna, isn't gonna squash it for me. Uh, the daily drop ins with the Teach Better team, I know, like, I have been to every single one of them. And I, I joked with Jeff that we need to have a finale episode, like a grand finale, um, because it really was like, hey, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get ready, um, and I'm going to listen to this podcast before I even start my day, and or the the daily drop in, and it's because it, there were there were new people on there all the time, like uh, Ray had uh Lindsay on there this morning and I was like I'm gonna follow her on all the things because she was just so positive and had these like snippets of like quotes that like, stuck in my head like get out of shouldville and I'm like yes I want to get out of shouldville <laughs> and so I think just just staying connected with people who are like-minded and are staying positive and looking for solutions instead of just kind of sitting in the problem no, I love that. Looking for solutions instead of sitting with the problem. Love it. That's a line worth, worth sharing for sure. So when it comes to advice, I mean, you kind of just shared a piece of advice. But when we talk about advice in question five, we always like to go to, you know, whether this be a new teacher or a veteran teacher, what do you feel like educators need to hear to continue to, you know, obtain this uh, really progressive classroom where we put students first and kind of everything in between that you're really focused on? Yes, I think that whenever you get into teaching and you're a new teacher, like you have all of these ideas and you want to kind of just, you know, charge head first into it. And um, there's something about having an amazing mentor. And sometimes you don't always get that mentor the first time around and kind of quietly sit and watch and listen and, and find those people who are passionate, who are trying different things and will kind of help you grow in your own way. So not somebody who's going to try to make you just like them, but somebody who's like, you have these ideas and, and this is how you can grow those and still have great classroom management. Here's, you know, some funding opportunities to bring those things to your classroom. You know, so I think that's something I'm really passionate about is that mentoring piece. And I always thought, you know, I'm, I'm this younger person and I might not have an idea that people really want to listen to. And so I want those new teachers not to think that way. Like you can contribute amazing things to education. And especially my, I had a student teacher who didn't get to finish her student teaching because of COVID, but she still showed up. So keep showing up. She was on meets. She was looking at ideas. She was um, contributing to the classroom. And it was this whole different world than she had pictured in her head of how student teaching was going. But she persevered through it. And so, I mean, if I get a call about the student teacher, I'm like, yes, hire her. She can adapt. She can be excited about education. She made connections with kids through a computer screen. Like, she is the kind of person you want on your team. Mm, I love it. She sounds awesome. Let's hire her. 
Right. Yeah. Really. <laughs> That's awesome. And I love and, and I love that you that you're recognizing that she's stepped up and, and I I know that you're probably in, in, enforcing it with her that hey, this is this is what you do. Sometimes things come up that we can't control and you can only control how you react. And I love that. That's such an, a valuable lesson for student teachers right now. So um, before we get into the six questions, you said that we could have some fun and do a giveaway. So let's do that. Yes, let's do we're it. We're going to do, we're giving away one copy of your book, Play Yay. And Ray, what do we have to do to get it? All right, here's the deal, guys. You know I'm going to make it simple for you. I want you to share out on your favorite social media, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, choose your poison, share out how you incorporate play in your classroom. Now, I don't care if you teach elementary, middle school, high school, college, whatever type of educator you are, the opportunity for play is so important. And we want to hear your best idea, your best strategy for incorporating play into your classroom. And when you share out, please make sure you use hashtag teach better talk and hashtag teach better team. You can even tag us if you want to, uh, depending on where you're sharing. And we will pick a lucky winner to win a copy of the book. Love it. That's exciting. All right, let's have some fun, Brianna. You ready? All right. We're gonna do these next six questions. Your goal is to answer each one 15 seconds or less. Okay. What is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Remind. Give us a book you're reading right now. Little Fires Everywhere. What do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? You can name up to three. Emily Francis, Garrett Lerner, Sarah Thomas. On Twitter or Instagram or both? Twitter. Twitter. Uh, what's a good YouTube channel or website for educators? Uh, Teach Better Team. Ooh, I like it. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Reflecting in a way that's meaningful to you, find a way to play, and something that makes you th thrilled to do. Find something that makes you thrilled. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, we have a history that shows what hate can do. We have nature that shows what hate can do. So why waste your time being anything but kind? Oh, I like that a lot. Um, Are you great. sure you haven't been on the podcast? I feel like you must have practiced that. <laughs> no, I've never been on the podcast. I love it. That was good. Thank you. Well, I want to make sure that everybody, and I mean everybody listening, can stay connected to the work you're doing because, man, even like tro trophy worthy, like question six speed round, that was killer. They not only are going to take all of your advice that you're able to share, but also hopefully look further into your book and get connected. So where can people find you? What's your favorite social media handles? Give us all the details. Yes, you can find me over at Twitter at Play Yay. And then Instagram is just an extra word, Play Yay Author. And then I do have a website. Um, it's playyay.weebly.com. Facebook is also at Play Yay. Um, I have um, my books are, you can find my books on um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, or the EduMatch bookstore. Love it. You can find all the links and resources, everything we talked about over at teachbetter.com and the show notes as well as really important links for connecting with Bree and keeping the conversation going. So head over to teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. Let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Brian, this has been a blast. I'm so excited we finally got you on here. I still don't know. Ray and I are going to conquer down for the next two to three weeks and try and figure out how it took so long to get you on the podcast. <laughs> so excited to have you on. Really happy uh, that you're able to come on and share your story. Really appreciate you just taking some time out, having some fun with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Until next time. Let's get out there and let's teach better.